Peace, brothers and sisters. This is my video going over my ancestral DNA. I recently had my results done. Well, actually, I had it done a few, probably a couple years ago or a few years ago. And it took me a while to get the video, this video together. So thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoyed the video. In honor of God and our ancestors, may we always remember them. wonderful quote from Marcus Garvey that discuss how important it is to, uh, for us to know where we come from. Um, I'm going to be interchangeably saying black or African, but to me it basically means the same thing um, depending on the context specifically, but I, I see them as the same thing. Being an African does not just mean I was born in Africa. It means I have embraced my culture and knowledge, my worth. I am an African not because I was born in Africa, but because Africa is born in me. So the beginning, this I'm um, pretty much discussing how my whole life I've wanted to know where I came from, and um, this is just very exciting for me. So let's start my exciting journey. A few years ago, I had my DNA tested in National Geographic for the Geno 2.0 project. I had some idea what the DNA might say, but I can't pretend that my results didn't still surprise me. My results were delivered to me and I read them, but it still took me a few years of learning more about who I am before I would fully understand them. My DNA results revealed. So this is the beginning of my ancient ancestry DNA. And as you can see, it's saying that I have some hominin ancestry in me. Um, so I'm just gonna go over what hominin ancestry is and it is in, uh, covering it's kind of like the umbrella over neanderthals and denisovans which are two separate species that are not considered human like they're because if they were human they would just be part of the homo sapiens but they're actually part of i believe it's called the homo hydrogenesis um species so you have the Neanderthal, which is actually a, a species that's found in Europeans. They lived in Euro Eurasia. And then um, when the Africans left, finally left Africa way after the hominin and, and, um, ancestors, they it's a theory that they made it with the... Um, Denisovans, Denisovans, and the uh, Neanderthals, and that's how some of the lighter races were created. I'm pretty sure. So we'll, I'll probably go into detail more in another video. Uh, I'm just I love I love this stuff. I love history. And it's so funny because when I was a kid, I really wasn't a huge fan of history, mainly because I didn't know how it would tie into my my life now and now I see just how important it is to know where you came from and where you're going so I'm still explaining the Neanderthal ancestry and just discussing where they lived and how it came to be that I would have their DNA within me so it says that modern humans arrived in Europe so scientists have suggested modern humans either killed the Neanderthals or they made it with them and kind of the race almost got, you know, taken into the human race, which was bigger. So this is going with the Den Denisovan part of my ancestry. 
and they are similar i guess to neanderthals it's a newer species that was recently discovered so there's not as much information and it's not as a popular species as neanderthals but they are definitely not human and they're not neanderthals either so <laughs> that's just that's a that's the species that went towards asia and then neanderthals went towards um went towards europe and so that's i think that's mainly the difference is that they kind of went two separate ways and evolved in you know because of the two different um environments and directions they went in and lived off the earth and just you know just what their culture or customs were Maybe that makes them very different um so they compared the gen genomes of the denisovans the neanderthals and the modern humans and that's how they came to find that DNA segments were very unique. So now we're moving on to my deep ancestry. It's covering a thousand years, between a thousand years to a hundred thousand years ago. And I found out that I am part of the L2 Haplo group a few years ago. I didn't really know what that even meant. Um, now I have a better understanding after doing more research um, about my history and my ancestry in Africa. So my DNA, I was only able to get my maternal side because my father is not present a part of my life and neither is his side of the family. Um, so I couldn't get my father's side of my deep ancestry or almost I would consider more like an ancient ancestral DNA. So this is saying the introduction to my story is written by National Geographic, really explaining how the beginning of my stories begins, like how it starts. And it's stating that the, you know, go back to the stories of your distant answers and show how the movements of the descendants gave rise to your lineage. And that's pretty much what you're gonna see is my genetic markers, where my ancestors migrated, where they lived, um, and I share DNA with the people that lived in those areas, so they are related to me, even if it's even dist either distantly or more closely related. They're they are with me. They're still my ancestors, and they do run through my veins as well. So, as I mentioned earlier, my haplogroup group is L two. Um, L two is probably one of the largest haplogroups in Africa. So <clears throat> it's pretty well known, and we're going to go into further detail about the L2 group. So the age of this branch is 89,000 to 300, 300,000, give or take to 21,500 years ago. And the location of origin was Africa. Um, the first page um, continued, I'm going more over in depth what was on that first page, and they showed a Bantu woman who is one of my ancestors and just so I had an idea what my ancestors would look like and she does look like members of my family mainly from her eyes her eyebrows and mouth from what I can see in that picture this is another photo of an older Bantu woman and I didn't make it like more close up on her because I wanted you all to read the text that's along with the pictures and these are two males from the Bantu group and they do resemble my family as well of course they're a lot darker because they have not gone through you know as much I guess integration as, as African Americans have I'll do a video later about reparation um, so National Geographic seems to not know much about the L2D group. They gave a little bit of um, de details or explanation of that group, but it wasn't as in-depth as just the L2 branch. The age is only about 12,000 years ago, and the location of origin is Central Africa. And it's stating from Central Africa lineage it has um, just kind of migrated from Central Africa. So now we're moving on to the good stuff. And it's still my ancient ancestry, but it's going more in detail. So 
So now you're going to see my heat map that shows where my ancestors lived and where they migrated and kind of getting an idea of what their lives were like back then from, from the people that existed who created, inevitably created me today. So you see parts of uh, kind of like Southern Western Africa, you got Ethiopia over there. In South Africa, you got northern uh, or northwestern Africa, and then this is just going more in detail. You can take the time to read it. It's a lot of text and my slideshow kind of moving along. I didn't want the video to be too long. Um, and here is I'm um, just discussing again how I was not able to get the DNA from my father's side. <laughs> So you can see the little dots on the map and get an idea where my ancestors were from in more recent times. It appears that my more recent ancestors lived in West Africa, South Africa, Italy, France, Iran, and southwestern part of North America. Um, I'm 77% Sub-Saharan African, which is amazing. I'm really excited about that. I cannot even explain my joy, right? Like, I mean, I'm like geeking how excited I am about knowing more about where my ancestors came from. So it's just showing, going more in detail again about some of the countries that I was from and just what this means. Um, and from here, we're gonna discuss the regional ancestry is from present to 10,000 years ago. And this does the genome DNA, which actually includes my, my biological father's side and my biological mother's side. So this is these, this is both sides, which is ex even more exciting than the last news, which was exciting in itself. And here we go. Now we're about to find out a little closer where I really am from in Africa. I'm so excited. To share this news with you all. These are just these are Egyptian statues. I thought this was a great photo um, to honor my ancestors from Egypt. So just wanted to include that for you all, just so you can learn a little bit more about me. And there you go. So this is an overview of my ancestry, regional ancestry results. Um, so you can see the colors that are represented on the map. They show where my ancestors lived based on the genetic markers. And you could just go over, I'm gonna go over the breakdown of the DNA results so you can better understand where I am from. So you have first 77% Sub-Saharan African is highlighted in blue. And you can see that it's going all the way across Africa. We moved quite a bit. This is this community of ancestry is found at highest frequency in the people of Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, they speak two languages, usually from Aruba and Lahia. Uh, so my next genetic marker is Northern Europe at 7%. I wasn't surprised to see the European area. You'll see on the map, uh, this is a dark navy blue area. Where I'm from in Northern European. In Northern Europe, my ancestors. Uh, or where I'm from too. <laughs> my ancestors. But um, this is including UK, Denmark, Finland, Russia, and Germany. So you're seeing Egypt and Tunisia is also popping up quite a bit. I do have some Mediterranean in me as well. And once again, you can see the color orange where my ancestors have come from for the Mediterranean part of my DNA. And the countries included for the Mediterranean DNA is Sardinia, Italy, Greece, Lebanon, Egypt, and Tunisia. 
Yay, my South African DNA. Uh, I have ancestors of the Bushmen of the Kalahari, and I'm showing those photos at the end of this video. I'm going to be showing a lot of, video, a lot of photos of my ancestors and um, my people, just to show you how we look like. Um, and this is 6% part of where my DNA comes from, so six, my ancestors came from that region. And this is mainly related, I'm mainly related to the Kwasan people of Southern Africa. They're also known as the famous Bushmen of the Kalahari. <coughs> then you have my Native American ancestry. You will notice the last in the states where Native Americans was really originated, and it is in America. The people of African descent were already in America when Christopher Columbus arrived. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> And now you're seeing the map again, matching the colors where it says Native American 2% and the part of where those ancestors were living. And it represents the original settlers of North and South America who arrived via the Bearland Strait. They originated from Siberia and Mongolia. So just going a little bit more in depth, the Native Americans that were really in America, that a lot of people think is in their family, were actually black Native Americans. There's actually a video I'll probably include with another video. It's going to be this video, but it'll be the extended version, um, including, or I'll just upload to my channel if you guys subscribe, and you'll see... Um, proof that they did find skeletal remains of a black woman who was aboriginal african aboriginal and she came to america by sea and uh, we lived here before anyone else lived here because we're the first people on this earth so we have been all over this earth before any other races were created so a lot of people think they have Native American in the film, they do, but it's not the Indian Native American, it's the Black Native Americans. It's pretty cool. And this picture looks like my son's father, the little girl to the right, she's beautiful. She looks like someone who could be in my family. Just looking at her for her eyes, her eyebrows, just to show just how closely we may, we look like them. And okay, back to the original programming. That's a picture of the Maasai tribe, another famous group of Africa. My Southwest Asian ancestry explained, I pretty much have an idea now how I got Southwestern, <laughs> Southwest Asian, Asian DNA in me because of the whole Native American thing. So you'll see here on the map, or. Yeah, on the map, the 2%. And actually, it's not the Native American reason why it would be more the part of the Mediterranean. But this is uh, the Middle Eastern area. And the Middle Eastern area, since it, it kind of went past, it was Iran and Tajikistan, I believe it's pronounced, where, where some of my ancestors are from. It's only 2%. So what do my results mean? So it's basically saying they compared my DNA to populations of groups that they had that my DNA closely matched. So it doesn't necessarily mean I'm from these groups, but it's a really highly likely chance I am because my DNA is so similar to the groups. So the first reference population is the African American group, of course, because I'm African American. So you can see the comparison between the 73% for the African and then 77% for me, and the breakdown just continues. And you know, you can pause it if you want to really look in depth. I just wanted to move the video along so it won't be too long. It's going close to about an hour, but there's so much to cover. Um, the second reference population is the Lahia people of Kenya, which I'm so excited to finally know. This is this is everything to me, is knowing this part of my DNA, because I already kind of had an idea of what I had in me as far as the African American side, but I only knew up to like where my, my great grandparents, I didn't know anything past them. So I always just wanted to know who I was 
as an African. Like, how, where did I come from in Africa? Africa is a huge continent, and people confuse it. They think it's a country all the time. It's not a country. It's got 52, I believe, over 52 countries. And I wanted to know which country I belong to, and now I know. Kenya. So let's check out my ancestors. This is the the group I'm from, the Bantu-speaking people. (laughs) These are my ancestors, the Bantu-speaking Lahia tribe of Kenya. Oh man, I wish you guys could see how excited I am. I'm I I have worked on this video for at least almost a week. I mean, it just had to be perfect. It was so important to me to really honor my ancestors and my relatives. It just this just means everything to me. So I took a lot of time doing a ton of research and finding uh, photos that resembled my family just to show the resemblance and it really wasn't even that hard to find people that looked like us once I knew which part of Africa I was from I mean wow I have thousands of pictures now I just I kept seeing people that looked like us and I just kept saving them in a the folder and it's just been just been an almost just very emotional incredible experience so I'm I'm really excited to share this with you all today and just teach you more about Africa and Kenya as a Kenyan. I consider myself a Kenyan. So this is the first photo coming up that's including my family, a family member. And the first person I'm showing is my mom. And wow, I mean, look at that. Aside from my mother being lighter than the Ethiopian woman, they look almost, almost identical with their features. Um, the cheekbones, the eyes, the mouth, everything just looks so similar. And then this is a photo that's including my older sister. And I want to say I'm in the video, the, the photo as well. No, she's my older sister. She's beautiful. Look at her. And then you have the Ethiopian woman to the right with, I love finding photos of, you know, Africans that have their tribal design and tribal wear. I don't want to find just a cookie cutter. Um, I mean, no offense, but I like to see people Africans being African because I'm just really uh, excited about our culture and learning more about it. And this is an Ethiopian woman in the first square, my sister and I, my mom, and then there's two Ethiopian women to the bo- on the bottom right corner. And I actually had to go and find a lot of Ethiopian women to find people who look like my sister and my mom which is funny because everyone when I was growing up everyone thought I was from Ethiopia and there are Ethiopians who look like me as well but I I could find Kenyans that look like me too so this is an amazing photo for me my my little brother and then it's the Kenyan man to the right he looks like he's from the Maasai tribe and that's my sister with him just a proud moment um I don't even know what to say this is my really handsome brother to the left. And then you have another Kenyan man from the Maasai tribe. And wow, they just, they look, I mean, the, the bone structure, the eyes, everything just almost identical. Um, this is a woman from Amara Tiger and she's from Ethiopia. And I just wanted to show how I do have Ethiopian similarities as well. Uh, this is another Ethiopian woman dancing. She's beautiful and my mom and my brother to the right and you can see us looking like them (laughs) i actually i can't wait to go home and and just be amongst my people um this is the kenya man and this this is probably one of my favorites because it was just so spot on my brother and this man they look exactly their features are wow i mean i couldn't have gotten more right with the smile the eyes and nose and um you know of course we're like i said before we're a little bit lighter than the Africans because we were quite diluted due to the transatlantic slave trade. So, (laughs) um, so this is like another photo. I I believe this is just, yeah, this is just my siblings and I have, I have three siblings that are biological and I just wanted to show us all four and our features and, you know, just so you can see how we all kind of have the same features of the Kenyans and the, and the Ethiopians. 
So these are four sisters from the Maasai Kenyan tribe. Their group is called, I want to say it's Mope. If I'm saying it wrong, please feel free to correct me. They're the first non-American group to sing the national anthem at the NBA playoffs. And they are gorgeous. These girls are beautiful. They actually remind me of my sister when I look at them. They look a lot like my older sister. <laughs> so yeah, when I see any of them, I'm like, yeah, it just looks just like my sister. It's, 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 it's amazing. I wanted to show more photos of... The two in the middle from the Romo tribe, and they're both from, I want to say Ethiopia. The Romo tribe, you'll see later. You'll uh, learn more about them later in the video. This is a young Ethiopian woman, and I just wanted to show how Ethiopian people do not have to look all the same exactly, because I know some people are going to be like, how do you, how do you look Ethiopian? You're dark-skinned. But there are dark-skinned Ethiopians. Black, dark-skinned black people were everywhere in this world, so we're... Just because you don't see us on TV or out out front because we're in a white supremacist um, world doesn't mean they don't exist. They just aren't the go-to for what they want to show as the face of whatever country or, you know, whatever it is. So this is my mom and my sister at the airport. You can just see their features again and how much they look like the Ethiopians. I see more Ethiopian in them than Kenyan. And this is my beautiful mom, a photo taken in the 80s. She looks fabulous, and I just had to include this photo because it's probably one of my favorite pictures of her. She looks like a celebrity. She's a and this is a photo of my mom and her husband in 2012. And I wanted to show photos of how we looked during years of change, our facial features changing just so people who don't know us can see how we look like our ancestors. Because you may be like, I don't see it, but it's, it's there. And look, my mother looks just like an Ethiopian woman in this photo. She's, <laughs> that's her husband to the left. And this is the next picture coming up is my beautiful grandmother, which is on my mom's side. So it's my mother's mother. Which is meaning that's my maternal lineage. It's my grandmother, then my great-grandmother, and so on and so forth. So I wanted to include her just so you could also see her features and just see how that they, the similarities in our features just continue down the line all the way out to my grandmother and probably would, would continue with my old with my great grandmother too uh, and so on and so forth. And then this is a photo at my graduation. I had graduated with my MBA. And I'm taking a photo. I wanted to try to get one with my sister without her glasses on so you could really see how we all look so similar, but. Uh, that's my sister to the left, me in the middle, and my mom to the right. Then you have my beautiful mom in Korea. I just wanted to really emphasize and show you guys how Asian our features look. My mother, when she first went home with my dad, they thought that my mom was Asian. And they were actually upset because they wanted him to be, marry a black woman, but she, he took him a while to prove that she was indeed black and actually there's a lot of Asians in in um, Asia that are black and they again they just aren't the face of Asia so you think they're light they're white or light lighter skinned but they actually aren't and there's actually a lot of racism that occurs all over the world where the darker skinned people are not you know well celebrated as as we should be this is my grandfather my grandmother and my sister and my grandmother in the bottom photo she's beautiful i cannot say enough <laughs> so um so this these photos are for my sons and i and i wanted to kind of split it up i know i'm showing a lot of family members so just make it a little easier if you want to kind of figure out who you're looking at and the relation between who so my dna goes down to all three of my sons but none of them will pass my dna on to their children because uh, i have only mitochondrial dna will just stop at them if i had a daughter which i don't she would continue my lineage uh my dna down to her daughter so, so um, so this photo is going to show the mean elder woman, Kenyan woman, and then you have a Kenyan woman at the bottom, or I want to say she looks like a girl, and then you see me to the right at the bottom, and I really love the, the bottom photos, I, I think we look so alike in those photos. Then you have my youngest son and me in the next photo coming up.
Just snapping, you know, doing some ussies or, you know, some stuff. <laughs> Having fun with the camera. And you can just see our features. And, you know, some of the similarities we have. Then you have my love and I. This is just a great photo to show my Kenyan slash Ethiopian features as well. And so I'm going to think my, my fiance is from Nigeria. So, you know, you guys sound off and let me know in the comments below where you think he's from. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to take his DNA test, so we'll see. My kids are really excited too. They want to take their, get theirs done now. Um, this one coming up is my prom photo, year 2000. And like I said before, I want to, I like showing the older photos and the newer ones just so you guys can see the features. And if you're thinking, oh, they don't look like them now, like you know, King or whatever now, it's probably because I, I put on some weight. And a lot of the pictures I found, they were, they were pretty slim and trim and looking like their diets are probably a lot healthier than the American diet. <laughs> um, so it's funny because I used to hate my nose, but now I'm proud of it because I realized that my nose and the rest of my features are what connects me to my ancestors. So I, I don't know. I can't see my... I'm happy I'm not like other people are changing their features because it kind of takes away from who you are. And then if you have children, you're kind of teaching them to not like who they are either because they're probably going to get that nose if you change. So this photo is my sons, the king boy, Kunin boys, and my oldest son wearing the red fitted cap. And once more, you can just see how we're all looking like one big happy family. Those look like cousins. <laughs> you know, of course, you have to once more remember that the complexion is not what makes us look like are my ancestors or our ancestors, my family's ancestors, um, because of course it's kind of like a little bit of a given that we're going to be lighter because we're not 100% African. This was an event my sons and I were at for Kwanzaa. We celebrated Kwanzaa for the first time last year and we loved it and we're going to be celebrating it from here on. Then this is my really handsome middle son. He's in a photo with some Kenyan children. And this was just a really quick search. Because when I first started this project, I thought that it was going to be like, boom, I'm going to throw some photos up. Like I said in the other, further earlier in the video, like it started with me just, I'm going to create a few collages and shoot them over to my family on Facebook. And then I was like, oh no, I'm going to package them in a flipogram. Then I was like, wait, this is too big of a deal to just do that so next thing i know it's a full-blown video with music and narrative and photos and explanations and just it just it kind of morphed into this grand amazing project <laughs> so loving this section this is the kenyan and ethiopian children they're just so beautiful i had to just show how gorgeous these these people are and i, I just i really felt honored to be a part of this this lineage you just I'm really hot just proud this little boy looks just like my brother when he was younger i mean he looks he looks like him now actually he'll be a son a little beautiful girl she actually kind of looks like me when i was younger uh, she has like a mark on her forehead that kind of looks like a birthmark i have on my forehead My kids are so funny. They thought in this photo that the little baby looked like Jonathan, my youngest son. <laughs> I have three sons. They're named Jalen, Avery, and Jonathan. And they are the loves of my life. I'm sorry for my fiance. And then this is a little girls. I love showing, you know, just the different. I like learning more about the cultures and showing and displaying the the, the different unique cultures. This kid is just adorable. <laughs> He's too cute for us. I, have, I definitely have a little bit of weakness for little boys because my son, I have three sons. I don't have any daughters. So I just, I see little boys like this and I see my children. I just want to squish them. They're so cute. Um, this is some cute little Kenyan kids. Looks like they're in a school of some sort. Looks like they were in uniforms.
I love this photo because it again reminds me. It actually reminds me of my sons and all their cousins. It's just a really cute. We took a photo like that in front of it. I wish I would have posted it, but you know, maybe in another video. <laughs> this little girl looks just like me when I was little. Oh my gosh, like her complexion, her face, her little smile, her nose, her hair. I'm just like, oh my, I don't even know what to say. I really don't. It's incredible. And this video just goes on and on because I just kept adding photos. I have so many. I had to keep putting more and more photos in just to show you all what kings and Ethiopians look like and just how we look so much like them. And it's just shocking to me because I just feel like it's been so many years since we were. I've never even been to Africa yet. I do plan on going very, very soon. Oh, that's my sweetheart. It's my little, my little one. He's six months old. That's Jonathan. And I have him next to a really cute baby. They actually both have two little teeth at the bottom. He just has two bottom teeth in. And it's a cute little baby on the left, bottom left side. And I felt like, she, I want to say it's a little girl with like her eyes like my son. And they all have the forehead, the family forehead. As <laughs> you can see right there. I posted it because he looks just, he looks Ethiopian, Kenyan, and everything in between. Like right now with the little forehead, his little eyes, like. The shape of the eyes and nose and mouth. He's just uh, he's, so cute, my heart, little, he's my heart. He's my little sweet, sweet heart. He's a baby, of course. You know my oldest son. I love him too. Um, okay, so this is another video. I mean, another photo I'm showing. And wow, this is again amazing. The features I usually see right away: the forehead, the nose, the mouth, and, um, usually, and the even the cheekbones. I had this one photo I mean, uh, <laughs> my fiance was like, um, are you going to use the same photo in every picture? I'm going to try not to. <laughs> the lady to the right. I don't know, just it, her eyes, just the, everything about it. Then the little girl, the bottom is beautiful. I had, I had to get her in there. Show how she looks like my family as well. So this is one of my favorites because it's showing my grandma and my uncle who passed before I was born. And I really wanted to include them um, because they just, they, you know, they just hold such a special place in my heart. And you can see with my grandmother the nose right away, like, yeah. and the complexion, the eyes, and mouth. Then you see Michael Carl, the eyes, the lips, and the, his mouth, everything looks like the Kenyan man. Know the world in yourself, never look for yourself in the world, for this will be to project your illusions. Ancient Egyptian. My African roots made me what I am today. They're the reason I exist at all. This is my favorite part of my video. Just this is showing the motherland, kind of showing you guys where Kenya and Ethiopia are on the map because I didn't even know <laughs> that Kenya was actually in Central Africa. So when I saw Central Africa on my DNA results, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, Kenya's in the middle, so that's, must be where I'm from. And then I looked at it and I was like, wait, hmm, you know, I didn't know was where it is. And come to find out, this is explaining why everyone thought I was Ethiopian my whole life. <laughs> Boom, there you go. So you see, Kenya is right under Ethiopia. Like, is that crazy? Is that crazy? Like, out of all the places it could have been, 
it's right underneath Ethiopia. So I was like, you know, I still have to figure out. I am going to get some more DNA uh, tests done by probably at least two more companies just to kind of narrow, make sure the information is completely accurate and just try to get as much information as I can about my ancestors. Because as I said, Earlier in the video, I do plan on going overseas and meeting my family members, my relatives, and I also plan to help them out and give back. And I, I think there's something that um, we should, as African Americans, should do is invest in Africa and uh, support Africans who have it pretty rough. I mean, we just really need to unite and stick together and not try to be so independent because it's not working out for us. Um, this is just going a little bit more over the Swahili language. That's the official language of Kenya. Which I thought was amazing because I that's the only language I really know somewhat about because of Kwanzaa and uh, this organization I'm with. We speak mostly uh, Swahili to each other. So this is, I'm just showing you guys some famous Kenyans. And who's that? Our president. And then you got the beautiful Lupita Nyong'o. And... I have a surprise for you guys later, <laughs> a little later in this video about her. She's one of my favorite, favorite actresses in the whole wide world. If anyone knew, oh my gosh, I love her. And this is my love for her before I even knew that we were both from the same country. So you see photos of her looking gorgeous. Um, and I just looked at her and I was like, wait, <laughs> okay, you know, and so I decided to show you guys a photo of me as well. I shot an older photo so you guys can see before the baby weight came on. <laughs> My face is a lot fuller now, but I used to have, you know, a face shape like hers, you know, a little bit thinner, slimmer when I, before children. I feel like I resemble her without makeup, and here I am. I even have a little TWA like her. <laughs> this photo I was actually uh, probably like three or four months pregnant with my first son. military overseas. And yes, I do think I look like her without makeup. I feel like I could probably get my makeup to look like hers and lose about 200 pounds. And then I'll look even more like her again. <laughs> So this is an actor, his name is Owisa Odera. He's in a lot of um, mainstream TV shows. I don't really watch mainstream TV, I watch a lot of YouTube and kind of off the, off the cuff type shows, off the cuff um, So the next photo is just showing the American First Family. Because they're beautiful. <laughs> I just want to show them because our president is Kenyan. Kenyan which means his daughter are also of Kenyan ancestry. They have Kenyan DNA too. And I can really see it in his, in his daughter. The oldest daughter I think looks a little bit more like the mother. Um, this is more famous Kenyans who I feel like you should know if you call yourself a Kenyan. No. <laughs> okay, you, I mean, you know how some people take things for granted, like, even with me being an American, I consider myself African-American, I say African first with pride, um, but I do believe, like, you know, if you, you know, you should always be studying and self-studying and educating yourself and always trying to improve who you are and your, your knowledge and your wisdom, so I do think it's good to know. Um, you know, if you're in an area, like, don't take it for granted, like, oh, I'm Kenyan, then you're done that, and then you get people who are trying to become American, and because they have to study to get that citizenship, they actually probably know maybe 80% more than the actual Americans do, because you just get comfortable and take this for granted, and you shouldn't. So, I thought it'd be a good idea to just help you all get to know a little bit more about Kenyans, and... Um, so I researched and found some of the video on musicians, and, you know, athletes, um, religious leaders, actors.
actors, writers, get some Kenyans, you know, even freedom fighters. And I'm, a, I'm a revolutionary, so that really resonated with me. I'm also a writer as well. Um, and I love academics. I love education, as we can see. I'm doing a lot of research right now just for the fun of it. Um, but, yeah, they, uh, you know, some of these groups just really spoke to me because I feel like I'm really big on, I'm really big on religion, though. Um, I'm more of a spiritual being. So we have more pictures of my ancestors. Uh, that's the African, the Kenyan flag. And I will be making t-shirts just celebrating Kenya and probably the other African countries as well. I have a website uh, called www.lockstarrevolution.life. And that is the name of my show is called Lockstar Revolution at www.lockstarrevolution.life. dot l i f e. And I will put the website in the comments below in case you want to come by and get some African Pride t-shirts. Um, feel free to contact me at uh lockstar at gmail.com if you have a special request for t-shirts so i'm still showing famous kenyans and some of the things that kenya is known for one of the things kenya is known for are um definitely sports and their tribes their tribes are pretty uh popular and well-known as well like the Maasai tribe Maasai tribe and the um the Bushmen I've heard of both of those before I knew I was Kenyan and then this is a really awesome slide that just talks about the 10 facts you should know about Kenya um you know just take the time to read over it I did think some of this stuff was pretty pretty cool information on both sides um the first one and this one about for the Amer Kenyan American children And as promised, and early in the video, I'm showing you the Bushmen people of Kalahari. And I love, love, love this photo. I saw it a while ago and went searching for it. And if you guys did not know who Sarah Bartman was, you can check out her story. They're just a quick Google search. Um, she's also uh, the, a member of the Kwa Kwa people. Um, and I want to say that's part of the Bushmen tribe as well. No man can outwit the ancestors. African proper. And this part of the video is dedicated to the adults and the elders who we should respect and give homage to. Because if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. A lot of them, of course, have raised us, have passed on their wisdom and their knowledge to us. And just help to mold us and become the people that we are, who we are today. So I don't, uh, you know, in African tradition, you don't forget the elders just because they've gotten old and you, you know, you put them in a nursing home and forget about them. You don't, you don't do that. I mean, you're kind of giving away a, a wealth of knowledge when you don't, when you forget about your ancestors. They've lived life. They've lived, you know, 80 years, 90 years. They live longer than you, let's put it that way. So they know something about life. And I, I just think it's so interesting because some people look at ancestors, I mean, not ancestors, but our elders, like, and even our ancestors, like, what do they know? You know, they're old, but it's like, if you have any sense, you'll know that that's exactly why they know everything because they're older than us. So you should always, 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 always respect them. Um, even if they're grumpy or whatever, you just, you give them that respect. I was always raised to respect my elders. And I still do to this day at 33 years old. I still have complete respect for elders. Even if they're not my relatives, I show respect to my elders. Even when I do crazy because they're still my elders. And I just, you know, always maintain some form of politeness as I um, interact with them. But I just saw some of these photos like this one right here. It's just stunning. I just... This, oh, I just, I don't know what to say, the chocolate, beautiful skin, the face, and you can just see this face has gone through so much in life. I just see so much wisdom, and the eyes are just beautiful. Her eyes are beautiful. And I thought it was just so cute. Just reminded me of my son, my little son, and I'm six months old. 
This woman looks like my sister. <laughs> thought this was a really pretty photo. Uh, uh, I want to say she's either Kenyan. I think I want to say she's Kenyan. And then you have another Kenyan woman. I found so many photos of the people from Mas the Maasai tribes. So I really was trying to get a variety of photos and not just be biased because I don't even know if I'm from the Maasai tribes. I didn't want to just be showing um, people that were from that one tribe and I may be from somewhere completely different, even though a lot of them do look like my family members. So, you know, it is what it is. People travel and move around and, um, you know, date and meet with others in that air in that you know region so even if we weren't officially by this tribe i'm sure we have some people that married into it or something along those lines that would connect us still it would be pretty incredible to find out we're part of that tribe though i'm not gonna lie <laughs> so hopefully with my other dna test results i can find out more about which tribe i'm actually from the national geographic they you have to submit your DNA results and get permission um, so that they can become a little bit more accurate with their results of where you're from and who your child was and so on and so forth. So I always go back and I like to check the website and to see if my results have become more, you know, accurate and, and more specific. This is another one of my favorite photos. I mean, her face is just, it's just wonderful. I, I don't know to say, it's just a beautiful face. And I, I love the eyes so much. They're just like all knowing, all seeing. They look like they've seen everything in life. And I would love to pick her brain and know what her life was like and what she has seen, as well as him. So now we have the next generation of Kenya. I thought this was just pretty cool to, to show that the lineage continues on <laughs> uh so you have to celebrate the youth just as much as you celebrate the elders and that's what i'm doing here these are my sons and their cousins and this is our future right here you know we should do everything we can to give them the best that we can that's my little guy um so that they can take on and go further than we did and make our families that much better that much stronger um and you know just make it life where they don't have to make the mistakes we did and they can go further notice how you're everyone's friend as long as you are denying your ancestry we're then made to pretend africa is the friend we used to know instead of the friend we need to know i am africa This video is dedicated to my ancestors and my loved ones who are no longer with us. I know you are still with us in our hearts and protecting us. Rest in peace. We love you and miss you. My Uncle Maine, he passed away last year. I was still dealing with that loss. I also lost my grandfather and that was rough a few years ago. And of course the uncle I showed you earlier in the video. Keep calm and know thyself. One day, I suddenly awakened 